Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Vasily Built for Speed here. Today we're going to be doing transmission oil change. Uh, we're going to install thermostat bypass valve on the transmission and then we're going to install a deeper pan, upgraded pan with cooling upgrade so it keeps it cooler and it holds three quarts uh, more oil in the transmission pan so it prolongs the life of the fluid and then keeps it safer so and we're going to be doing it on my dream truck that i recently acquired this is a 2017 mega cab uh ram 2500 it's 20 it's 49 000 miles um somebody rebuilt the transmission it's fully painted black uh, i'm surprised they didn't upgrade the oil pan and i don't think i saw any thermostat bypass valve on there so um that kind of surprised me but today we're going to be doing the oil change um transmission oil change even though probably was recently done but i want to change it to m's oil i run it in all my vehicles we had the best results great you know not not noticeable uh, differences in shifting and all that so and also great quality fluid so we're going to switch it to m's oil and i'm going to inspect the valve body make sure that's upgraded if that's not i'm going to have to get that soon too and then we're going to do a video on that also okay so this is the fluid we're using our sponsor m's oil this is the best out there i had great results like i said in my lifetime i used a lot of fluids and this one so far i noticed the biggest results and the quality and the way the transmission shifts like I said, you saw, I don't know if you guys watched the video in my other truck, my um, my Nissan Cummins um, changed it to this fluid. They started shifting much nicer and it's a higher quality fluid. And this is rated for like 50,000 miles in the Nissan world in comparison. The original is only like for 20. So this is a much better quality fluid. Um, I don't know what the original is rated in this Nissan. I mean, this Dodge Ram fluid, uh, what it's rated for, how much mileage. But this one... Uh, it's a much better quality fluid than any OEM out there. That's 100% certain. Uh, so we're going to be using that fluid. This is the PPE cast aluminum pan. You can see the fins there added for cooling. Same goes for the inside. So the transmission fluid doesn't flop all around because it adds three quarts of fluid. So the, there's that also. And then they give you a set of bolts. And the guide, if you guys you know installation guide if you guys uh, need it there's that and then i got the filter with the steel the metal uh, screw on that right there is metal it's not like the aftermarket i mean the original plastic garbage that breaks in in the transmission when you try, try to take it off sometimes so this is going to be a much better one and then this is a thermostat bypass valve that i was talking about it bypasses the thermostat if you live in a really cold climate you may not need to do this one i live in oregon so it's not that it doesn't really get that cold here so i'm going to swap it out because if you're not in a cold climate you don't really need the the thermostat this transmission i mean the, the worst enemy of the transmission is um uh the temperature high temperature if it gets too hot that's literally the worst enemy of any transmission um uh, high torque and then high torque causes too much heat and then yeah pretty much it goes downhill from there so you we don't want it, the transmission to heat up a lot that's a big no-no for any transmission in any car so yeah we're gonna do those upgrades um we're gonna get a deeper pan so you know prolong the life of the transmission fluid and um, more transmission fluid is gonna be better obviously it's gonna stay cooler and all that stuff uh but yeah so today we're gonna be doing that so i'm gonna show you guys how to do that i'm gonna put probably a drill a hole in the stock transmission to drain it because there's no drain plug in the transmission so i'm gonna drill it drain it then pop the pan off and then we're gonna install all these goodies okay so just as a guide in the guide it shows you guys how to tighten this in a star pattern as i usually do it with even without this but for people that are like diyers that are trying to do this stuff at home the torque on the bolts is eight to five foot lbs and that's the torque pattern i don't know if you guys want to screenshot this and then one more thing to mention on the high efficiency transmission fluid filter yeah, the filter cup houses 57 percent more uh, media than oem and then uh, it just explains the 10 micron media uh 80 percent 81 percent larger passages for higher flow and all that so this is a this is not just you know the threads being metal upgraded the actual filter itself is an upgrade from the oem one so that's one thing i wanted to mention also uh, i don't think i did that so yeah and then i also got from ppe the plug with the o-ring for the diesel fuel cap it just kind of slides in and slides out because there's no cap if you guys own this truck you guys would know uh, but yeah let's get started 
Okay, here's my transmission. As you guys can see, it's painted f fully black. This usually happens when you rebuild or build the transmission. The shop usually spray paints. And you can see mine is fully painted black and it doesn't look like it's that old. So I'm guessing in the last five to 10,000 miles, this transmission has been rebuilt at 49,000 miles. I believe this truck is tuned. So yeah, that's, that's why this transmission did not hold up. I mean, there's A6 markings. I don't know if there's any, there's no indications of who did it anywhere. Uh, I looked in Carfax, nothing. So, and then this is the pan, stock pan. At least I think this is a stock pan, which is just like this from skinny to, you know, to fatter over here. Um, I don't know, maybe not. I don't know, not sure, but I think this is stock, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to install the nicer pan on here today or not. But the oil pan, uh, my cousin has uh, 2500, exact same year, uh, same truck, but bone stock. And the transmission is stock, it's not painted black. And he has the same oil pan, so the oil pan is definitely stuck, so we're going to swap that out today. So I'm probably going to put a hole right at the deepest spot here um, in it, because you can see is, you know, there's no drain plug anywhere on the oil pan. And I don't, I don't feel like taking a shower in transmission fluid, so I'm going to just drill a hole here, let it drain out, and then I'm going to pull the transmission uh, bolts all around, and then I'm going to uh, swap the oil pan. Let's go. Let's see here. Oops, started smoking. Oh, I see transmission fluid. Let's do it one more time. Just a little bit more. I don't want to take a shower either. There it is. This is a very, very clean transmission fluid. This definitely been changed in the last five to 10,000 miles. Definitely. So this transmission is no, no older than five to 10,000 miles. This is where you hear like that wah, wah, wah music. This looks pretty stuck to me. It does not look like a billet valve body of any kind. The filter, I don't know if it was new or not. It was plastic fitting on that so I don't know what the whole point was to rebuild the full tranny and not upgrade the valve body uh, or maybe they wanted to go with the cheapest route I guess because um, that's a lot more money it's like a thousand bucks or something like that for a new valve body but I'm gonna have to upgrade that I'm gonna do the pan uh, this time around I may not do the bypass since I'm gonna have to go back in here um, I'll do that later, but I think that's a factory bypass. I'll install the PPE bypass later. Uh, I will just install the pan, put new fluid in it, and call it a day for today. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna check. I'm draining right now fluid. I'll show you guys the filter in a bit. But I'm gonna check how much fluid I drained. I'm gonna put that much and then plus two and a half quarts because they said the, this new pan adds three quarts. So I'll put a two and a half extra, start with that. Uh, on top of what I drained and then uh, we'll check the fluid once we start the truck run it through gears Get it to like about 100 degrees or so. I'll, te I'll check what the temperature is on these trucks to check the level, but yeah, let's do that Okay, and then there is the seal where the filter goes into you can use a pig Just make sure it's rounded edge like mine is not sharp in the front. It's like flat head almost so I just kind of picked it out pushed it in and then I put the new filter on and I might need to move these lines just a little bit. I'll see after I got the new pan on. But yeah, now I gotta put the new filter in and screw it in. And then we're ready to put the pan back on. Okay, you guys. So, for the sake of me, I know I'm gonna be removing this soon uh, again. Uh, this uh, oil pan because I'm gonna be upgrading the valve body. Uh, to increase the pressure. I mean they might have tuned this transmission to increase the pressure, but there's the plastic gasket That's right there in between here. I don't know if that's my light. Or why is it blinking in the camera? It's not blinking in reality, but anyways that plastic gasket and then there's internal leaks uh, Happened and so I'm gonna be upgrading this to billet aluminum one 
either rev max i'll do my research and then i will uh, upgrade the valve body so for the sake of that i'm going to be using this uh, rubber one uh that i received with the filter with the new filter this one here this one i got from ppe uh so i use this one uh, with the valve body and then this one has got a local parts store so i got this guy so i'll be using this because it'll be easier to remove and then after i upgrade the valve body since this pan already has a drain bolt I will be just, uh, I'll use a Permatex uh, sealer because I'm not gonna have any intention of removing this uh, pan again after that. But for now, I'm gonna be doing the rubber seal. I'm gonna use the rubber seal, put it back on, and then after that, we'll start fill, um, filling the oil. And we're gonna torque these to eight to 10 pounds, so probably 10 pounds uh, each bolt. Okay, so on this, uh, this uh, thermostat or the bypass valve, you with the new pan will not fit so you're gonna have to man that's magnetic <laughs> there's magnetic stuff in the filter but anyways uh over here you i just put the pry bar and just carefully slowly bent this back just a little bit because you don't want to crank too much because you don't want to break anything so just kind of crank it just little by little and then just test fit the oil pan until it slides in okay so as you guys can see that's pretty much 10 liters that i drained so I don't know. The lighting is pretty bad in here. I ordered some more LED lights, so. Uh, but um, judging from that, if that's 10 liters, and they said their deep pan is three quarts more, so I'm gonna put 10 liters, and then I'm gonna add two more liters on top of that. So I'm gonna put 12 liters in there, and then I'm gonna start the truck up, and then on the where the speedometer is in that center screen. I'm gonna go to where the transmission uh, temperature is and then I'm gonna idle the truck and keep switching it to reverse, neutral, drive, reverse, neutral, drive, park and then keep doing that like 10 seconds in each setting until the temperature reaches about 100 degrees Fahrenheit and then I'm gonna, with the truck running in park, I'm gonna pull the dipstick and I'm gonna check what the level is uh, on the dipstick and if I need to add some, I'll add some more and uh, yeah. Okay, so. so on a dipstick you're gonna see here let me see right there you see those two holes right there that top one if you start the truck up and your t transmission temperature indicates about 70 80 degrees fahrenheit that's where your fluid should be with the truck running in park once your transmission reaches 180 degrees it should be right on top that's considered hot temperature level so which we would be right there so between 80 degrees and 180, so let's put it at like around 120, 120 degrees Fahrenheit, 130 plus or minus, it should be somewhere in the ballpark of in between the cold maximum and the hot minimum, which is this lower line. So if you're about 120, 130 degrees Fahrenheit, your level should be right here at the minimum, in the middle, in between the two inner dots. So when you're 180 degrees with the truck running in park, your your fluid should be right there on the top of that line. So just the FYI. Okay, so to pump the fluid in, you can get a bent funnel that goes right there. This is the transmission dipstick, which is right there by the coolant reservoir. I pulled the dipstick out. I ran this tube into the dipstick, and then this top one, I put it in the actual in this. M's oil jug and I just pumped it in this has 9.4 liters so nine and a half liters so once I finish this up I put uh, two and a half more to make it 12 and then after that um, I'm gonna start the truck let it idle I'm gonna reach about you know 100 at least Fahrenheit and I'm gonna pull the dipstick and I'm gonna check and see what my level is at it should be in between the two inner lines, between cold and hot. It should be somewhere in the ballpark of that when I reach about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so now on the dash, we have coolant temperature, transmission, oil temperature, and oil pressure. We want the second one, trans temp, which is at 100 degrees right now. So, I already started the truck up, so it's running, and I'm gonna run it through reverse, and I'm gonna leave it there for about five to 10 seconds. And then neutral, let it be there for a couple seconds. Drive. And you want to run through gears a couple times. And you want to keep it for at least five seconds in each one. And you want to do that maybe about 10 times at the least, I would say. And it helps get the temperature higher because it circulates 
the pressure, increases the pressure inside the transmission. Okay, so we're at 105. So I'm gonna wait until it's about 120-ish. Okay, and then let's not forget. Check the, term, uh, the bypass valve, which is right there. And then check your oil pan, make sure it's not leaking. Mine is dry. Yes, the ground is a little wet, you can spill it here and there, but yeah, my oil pan is not leaking. Bypass valve doesn't seem like it's leaking, so we're good. Okay, so my temperature is at about 130 degrees. I pulled out my dipstick right there, the yellow one, and it's almost at the minimum hot line. So, uh, 130 degrees, that's about where it should be. Almost, uh, there's two little dots on the bottom and two on the top. The lower top one, it's about pretty close to the lower, the lower top one. So, at about 130 degrees, that's where it should be. I'm gonna go for a drive. Once it reaches about 180 degrees, when I come back, I'll park it, let it idle for about two minutes, and I'll pull it again. When I pull it again, it's 180 degrees. It should be at the max, at the, pretty much the top um, dot. There should, there's two bottom ones, two top ones. I'm gonna be making, looking for the, make sure the fluid is all the way at the top one, the highest one up. So yeah, the one I showed you guys in the video. So let's go for a drive, see how it feels with the new pan um, sadly I was gonna do the thermostat bypass valve but I think they sent me the wrong one the diameter on the inside of those did not line up so I'll do that later when I do my valve body but today it's just gonna be a fluid change and the oil pan uh, change to the deep sum so let's go for a drive and see how it rides as you guys can see it's 134 before we start driving and we're gonna drive it until it reaches about 180. You can then come back and double check the level. Make sure it's at the maximum. Okay, well, one thing I can tell you, I see exactly the same thing I saw with my Titan Cummins. Um, the transmission went from like, you know, harder shift to like you could feel them to really smooth and fast like it's if it feels like maybe it's just because it got so much smoother it feels like it's faster shift but it I feel the exact same thing what I felt with the Titan like with the Titan is you guys if any of you guys know about it it has a heavy duty transmission so it shifts pretty harshly and then I switched to the M's oil and it, a lot of guys told me that I didn't want to believe them because I mean who wants to believe you know just fluid could make a difference <laughs> well it does like Like you can't even hear it. Like it shifts so fast and smooth you can't even feel it or hear it. Like it's, just vroom, vroom, vroom. Like it's so smooth and like, it's it's hard to explain guys. Like it's, I tell people like definitely run Emzo, especially in the transmission. You'll know, notice a huge difference uh, on how it shifts. And I see the same exact thing. But one thing I'll tell you guys, I'm struggling to climb in, in temperature. So the pan is definitely doing its job. Like I can't, like I've been driving for like two miles, you know, doing accelerate, you know, I'm not pedal to the metal, but like I'm accelerating and I'm struggling to go past 141. So yeah, maybe we'll not be able to uh, reach 180 today, but uh, I at least want to get upwards of 150, which maybe if we idle, because I mean, when you drive and if the transmission oil pan is doing its job, it's gonna actually cool it off uh, with the air. So, because the, the, this is the way it's designed is to cool off the transmission. Let's see if we're just stopped right now, if the transmission is gonna climb. Yep, yeah, I stopped, it started climbing a little bit. So we're, we're at 147 now. We're driving, we couldn't get past 141. So yeah, um, I'm gonna wait until it at least gets to at least, I guess, 150-ish. And then I'm gonna go check the level again, just double check it. I'm sure it's fine, but yeah, and then we're done. Excuse my lighting. Uh, lighting is not that great right now, but I don't know. I've been idling, shifting through gears. It's um, 147, 148, 147, 145. It, I don't think we're gonna get past that unless I'm gonna be towing something uh, or like go and pedal to the metal, which I don't really wanna do uh, because it's a tuned truck and I don't have the upgraded valve body and this transmission was rebuilt already. So I really don't feel like pushing it right now. So 
Now I'm gonna call it good if I'm 147, I'm gonna go while it's idling in park, I'm gonna go check the fluid level, make sure it's somewhere towards the top, you know, towards the top two dots, and we should call it a day, I'm pretty sure. I'm just gonna double check, make sure after the drive, I don't have any leaks at the bypass valve and then at the oil pan, which we shouldn't. Um, I idled it for maybe good 10 minutes in the shop. We didn't have any leaks, but hey, we drove it. So let's double check on that. Once there's no more leaks, we should be good to go. I don't know if you guys can see that, but we're right, right there where my nail ends, right under like maybe a little less than a quarter below that line. And we're about 145 degrees. 180 degrees we should be up here so we're good to go i'm gonna call that good because our 180 should be above that uh, next time when i do the valve body uh, when i do the valve body i'm gonna push the transmission and i'm gonna make sure i get to 180 you know i'm gonna accelerate pretty hard and then i'm gonna make sure it reaches the maximum hot but right now i'm like i can't get even past 150. So the oil pan is definitely doing its job, especially when you start driving, the, tr the temperature starts dropping. As long as you're not like pedal to the metal revving it, it's, well right now it's like 42 degrees Fahrenheit outside and I can't really get it past 150. So the, the oil pan is definitely doing its job because usually it's, I would be able to right, get it past 170-ish. So the oil pan is definitely the, just doing what it's designed to do. Okay. Let's double check on the transmission oil pan. It is perfectly dry. The bypass valve it looks dry so we should be good to go okay so how much fluid did i did i put in the truck 13 and a half liters so you guys can do your math you can use the google uh converter um whatever you guys want to do 13 and a half liters that's with the ppe deep pan and i also installed the ppe filter which is longer with the metal fitting, we threw out the original garbage one with the plastic fitting, the screw on one, and then also we changed the flat filter also. Uh, so we put in 13 and a half, we drained 10 liters. Um, and yeah, the, the oil in the bucket, it's like on the darker, it's like really, really dark red. Um, a little darker than it looked when it were draining it, but so it definitely has, I would say five to 10, 15,000 miles on it maybe since it was changed uh it's definitely not like a one or two thousand mile fluid so it definitely has or um nah yeah it definitely has more than that because if it was fully rebuilt it was painted black i don't know why they didn't change the valve body that just doesn't didn't make sense to me but yeah i'm gonna change next valve body i'm gonna contact ppe and talk to ask them about the bypass uh the thermostat bypass because the holes in there are too small i don't know maybe it was the wrong one or something uh but uh if they don't have one i will order it for somewhere else but i'm going to change the bypass filter uh, i mean bypass the thermostat bypass uh, valve i'll change that when i do the valve body uh, i'll get do to do my research on that valve body whichever one uh you know has the best reviews and people trust the most and you know and the performance the best for towing for power all that kind of thing uh, i'll be ordering that one because i mean it's freshly rebuilt transmission i really don't want to be doing this transmission again so i'm going to do all the preventative things that i can do to maximize the life of this transmission like, so we can handle everything because yeah and then so i'll be making plenty of videos maybe grid heater delete um because of that bolt if it falls into the engine it'll damage the engine uh with maybe intake bear from banks or something i don't know i'll do my research on that but yeah there's gonna be a bunch of videos on this truck on my channel um so yeah if you guys enjoyed it give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel comment comments below if you have any questions or comments i'll do my best to answer them but yeah that's gonna be it for today so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video see you next time peace